giving all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yom Shai, by Hashem, And I'm going to entitle this video, The Dry Bones Are Waking Up. And that's pursuant to uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. One of my favorite uh, chapters. You know, there's certain verses that you, you have certain favorite verses in the scriptures, and then you also have certain um, favorite chapters. <clears throat> and that's one of my favorite, Ezekiel chapter 37. <clears throat> anyway, the reason why I gave, this, gave that the title is uh, there was a video that was put up by um, a vocab Malone. It was a long video. It was a long video that he cut. He took a segment of the video, which is seven seven, seven minutes long, and the title is, um, and I believe he was in Tampa. Uh, the title, because it says Tampa right here, it says, uh, "It says there's a million, there's a million Hebrew Israelites, church not ready." And he was, and he's correct. They're being overwhelmed by uh, this truth. You know, the first, if you go to the word uh, doctrine, the first precept that pops up is my doctrine show. Matter of fact, I want to bring, bring it up. I'm putting the word doctrine. Because there's only one doctrine. The very first time the word doctrine comes up in the scriptures, according to the uh, blue letter, is Deuteronomy 32, verse 2. My doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender er herb, and as the showers upon the grass. I mean, this is a topic right, right, right in itself, the, the word doctrine. You know what I want to do? Let me go to the first verse. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O ye earth, the words of my mouth. So this is a, a psalm of Moses, or song of Moses. You know, when, it's, when it says in uh, Revelation, it's sung the song of Moses. They're talking about this, this psalm right here, Deuteronomy 32. So now it says in the first verse, give ear. O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. So how is the Most High speaking to the earth? He's speaking to the earth through his prophets. See, these guys are focusing on the whole Hebrew Israelite thing that goes deeper than the whole Hebrew Israelite thing. The Most High is dealing with the elect, the prophets. The teachers, that's who he's dealing, it, dealing with right now. As a matter of fact, he's only going to save the elect. Well, let me read the third verse. And Bishop Nathaniel might like this. Because I will publish the name of Yahweh, ascribe ye greatness unto our power. So this is the Most High speaking to Moses, and the Most High saying, "Because I will publish the name of Yahweh, ascribe ye greatness unto our power." I mean, this is this is Moses' psalm, but he's sing, speaking singing about the Most High. So you know, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look up the word "publish."
the word is qua ra to call, to call out, recite, read, read, cry out, proclaim, to call, cry, utter a loud sound, to call unto, what does Isaiah 13, the first couple of verses say? Lift the upper banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gate to the noble. So all this stuff about Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites, black Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelism, that's like the first step. Ultimately the most high is gathering the elect, the chosen, the anointed, the ones that he gave an, an unction to, and that you know all things. Our job, this thing is simple. Eat the roll and go out and teach the sons or the children of Israel. So the Most High set us up and gave us uh, his secrets and his, one of his secrets is his name. So how can you say, well, we don't know the name? If you don't know the name, that means you're not one of the chosen. You're not one of the elect. Anyway, let me come back. All right, it says here, Job 11, verse 4. Let's see what that says. For thou has said, my doctrine, my doctrine. Doctrine, the, the word doctrine is singular. There's only one truth. Is pure. Pure meaning unadulterated. And I am clean in thine eyes. That's Job speaking. Proverbs 4 verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. So part of the most high's doctrine is the law. You ain't going to see the men of the Lord out there on the streets with a Brooks Brothers suit and tie and a smooth face. You ain't gonna see women out there teaching. So you see us, you see us with beards on our faces, you see us with the fringes, the garments. Then it jumps. Doctrine is not in there too many times. It's in there 51 times in the, in the Old and the New Testament. So the word is not in there too many times. But these 51 times and 50 verses that the, that the word doctrine is mentioned, these are some uh, powerful uh, precepts right here. Isaiah 28, verse 9, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And you notice it said doctrine singular. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. What breast is, this, is it talking about? It's talking about the scriptures. Let me let me look up something else. I come back. S spice. Spiced wine. Song of Solomon eight verse two. I'll start at one. Oh, that thou wert as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother. 
So is Solomon, is there any man going to go out and out there and talk to somebody and say, I, man, I wish you would suck on my mother's titties. Don't mean that. The breast is referring to the scriptures. And you have to have a teacher that go with the scriptures, which, by the way, the, scripture, the scriptures or the, the Bible is a comforter. Oh, that thou wert as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother when I should find thee without, I will kiss thee. Yeah, I should not be despised. This, by the way, this is a song of songs. These are all songs. You have Psalms, the Psalms of David, where you have the songs of Solomon. And um, this doesn't mean literally what it says. So let's break it down. Oh, that thou wert my brother. When somebody's, when we out, out there on the highways and the byways, you got somebody on the other side and they come around and then they, they come into the fold and they become a teacher. That's what that's talking about. That sucked the breast of my mother. The breast of thy mother is, is who? Is the scriptures. Wisdom is likened unto a woman. Wisdom is a feminine type spirit. When I would find thee without, when I will find thee without meaning, when I find you and you don't have this truth, I would, I would kiss thee. What does it mean to kiss thee? To teach, teach a man. I should not be despised. So when you come into this truth and you teach, you, you figure, damn, this, I, I see it. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, reincarnation is in the scriptures. I'm going to show you the precept. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. The name is the most high's name is Yahweh's son's name is that. That makes sense. So it made sense to you. So you figure when you go to the next man, it's going to make sense to him. It's not going to make sense to him. They're going to want to debate like the uh, comedic community. I don't know why Captain Tazariak is constantly debating. Maybe it's because of money. But you got to leave them. The scriptures say, let the dead bury the dead. They're, you're trying to wake up the dead. And, and when you come into this gate, you can't, so another thing that these guys do, these other comedic and these uh, black conscience guys do, the, the new thing is, I'm an I'm a Israelite too. Yeah, but you're a Muslim, you're a comedic, you're this, you're that, and you're an Israelite. Well, most I ain't dealing with you. What did the Lord say to Nicodemus? You must be born again. All that shit that you learned, in the past, you got to throw all that out in the garbage, and um, and you had to come in. You you know almost like I use the term naked. You got to come in like a newborn baby, desiring the sincere milk, which is the knowledge of the Most High. They said, "I will lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house, which is a school." And the school doesn't have to be a building. Who would instruct me? You have to be instructed. Let's look up the word instruct. You got the word construct. To build with. Instruct is to build in you. Would instruct me. Ooh, Lamad, Lamad. That means to learn, to teach. And, and this is the most I set up the order with uh, men being over other men. You have to be taught by other men. You come in your own way. You're going to get caught out there to learn, teach, exercise in 
to learn, to, to teach, to be taught, to be taught, be trained. Song of Solomon 8, verse 2, I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house who would instruct me. I would cause thee to drink spice wine. What is the spice wine? This truth. This truth is knowledge. is known as water. is known as milk. is known as bread. is known as blood. is known as wine. is known as oil of the juice of the pomegranate. The pomegranate juice is, is powerful, man. The other day I drunk, I, I, man, I might have drunk eight ounces of pomegranate ju juice and I was out because I wanted to run, I wanted to get out. I, I had things to do and I ain't eating nothing. I was, that pomegranate juice, it kept me up. Powerful properties in the pomegranate juice. His left hand should be under my head and his right hand should embrace me. That, you know, when you, some, somebody's sick, you're ready to die, you embrace them. Well, that's what we're doing with this truth. When we're teaching you, we're, we're embracing you with this truth. This is why people that can't get it, if they buck up against it, you got to let them, you got to let them die, man. You got to let them die. Any of you out there that say you're something other than the Israelite, or you say you're an Israelite plus your five other things, the Most High is going to destroy you. Point blank, period. The Most High is going to destroy you. The Most High, he, he desires perfection. You don't want no guy wishy-washy dude. And then not, it's not just about being an Israelite. It's about being a perfect Israelite is about seeking perfection. I charge you, O daughters of, of Jerusalem. Now he's talking to Israelite men that ye stir not up nor awake my love until he please. Now you had guys that come into this truth and they wound up shooting up a lot of people, killing their family killing his son or whatever. From, he got a gay spirit on him or whatever. You know, kill, you know, just losing it, man. And the scriptures say this, you don't do nothing till, till the most high does it. And if you're a prophet, you don't do anything. Prophets, prophets just prophesy. That's what they do. What does LeBron do? What does LeBron do other than, than, um, uh, playing ball is he is he nurturing his garden in his backyard i'm always in ain't nobody gonna watch him fucking grow you know roses in his, in his fucking backyard man ain't nobody interested in lebron james james fixing his car they're interested in what he does in perfection which is the game of basketball. Same thing with Michael Jordan. They, that's their whole whole world. We cannot, they can't get out of it. And well, it's the same thing with us prophets. You know, I, I say this every once in a while. You got guys that do disappear in that. Guess what? Them guys ain't prophets. You do it, you disappear. We don't see you for two years, eight years. Six months, you ain't you ain't no prophet. Anyway, this is a very good psalm or song of Solomon, which is Yahweh Shai. But anyway, let me get let me get back and let me get into this. If I can found find it. Okay, here, boom. <clears throat> this video, there's a million Hebrew Israelites, church, 
not ready. See, with, with Vocab Malone is warning you, he's admonishing you, which means a stiff warning that if you go against this warning, you're going to look like a damn fool. He knows that he cannot deal with the whole Hebrew Israelite thing. They said there's a million plus Hebrew Israelites and the church isn't ready for them. A seven minute video by Vocab Malone with current numbers, stats and data on the, on the movement. Okay, let me bring this back. Okay, I'm gonna let you, um, well, I'm gonna read this. It says uh, Pew Research Center. And I heard of the Pew Research Center. This was as of 2019, there were 46.8 million people who self-identified as black, making up roughly 14% of the country's population. Now they say that the population of so-called Negroes, black people, colored folks, is um, it, it, it's it, it's almost 50%. They said by a certain year, I think uh, I went through this a while back, but we're somewhere, according to them, according to them, to them. There's about 50 million Jakes. And that and, and the population of the US is uh over uh 300 million. So we're talking about 50 million. We're talking about uh what is that 20%? My, my math, I used to be good at math too. Eighteen percent, almost twenty percent is Jake according to their numbers. So it says in uh, 2019, there were 46.8 million people who self-identified as black, making up roughly 14% of the country's population. 4% uh, of uh, 46.8 million, million equals one, 1,872,000 Hebrew Israelites. So let me let you listen to this and then I'm going to go through a couple of precepts. I'm going to tell you where I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to Ezekiel chapter 37 and I'll try to breeze through that because we all know it or should know it. And then I'm going to go into uh, Revelation chapter 11. And there's other precepts. So this is the great awakening that Vocab said the church is not ready. He says that there's a million plus Hebrew Israelites and the church isn't ready for them. What does he mean by that? You can't deal with the, you can't, hey, will you roll up on us? With your little John 3.16 scripture, with your one, two scriptures, you're going you're gonna to get, get bombarded by what? That doctrine is going to fall like rain on your ass. Was that Deuteronomy 30? Was that De Deuteronomy 32? Verse 1 or verse 2? Let me bring it back. Yeah, 32, verse 2. 32, verse 2, which is a song of Moses. It said the 144,000 in Revelation, the 14th chapter. I th but let me wait a minute. No, no, I believe it's Revelation 15. Let me go double check that. Revelation 15. Yep, Revelation 15. 
a scene of heaven. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that gotten the victory over the beast. So what John saw and recorded, scribed down, was something that's getting ready to happen. That's the elect being delivered. You know, he saw them being beamed up. He saw the missiles coming. We read that second verse again. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image. We're not talking about a picture of Caesar Boger. And over his mark. What does that mean? That they didn't take the karagma. Now, pursuant to Revelation 20, verse 4, it says some of them that reject the, the, the karagma is going to get their head chopped off. Revelation, uh, Revelation um, 2, verse 10. They're going to be cast into prison for 10 days. <clears throat> It says, uh, and them, the elect, that had gotten the victory over the beast, because you could be, you could say that you're an Israelite all you want. You can know, know breakdowns out the wild zoo. But if you take, you know, if you ultimately take that karagma, you're going to be destroyed. And you're not of the elect any goddamn way. If it were possible, they would have deceived the very elect. They're not going to, none of the elect is going to get this mark, this uh, karagma. It says, it says, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the most high. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the most high. So what's the song of Moses? Deuteronomy 32. What does the second verse say? My doctrine so drop as rain. That's why vocab came to the realization that you Christians... Don't even try to, you know, convert them because you're not going to. They're too, they're too deep into the scriptures. That's why this guy res res resorts to anytime some guy was a part of Israel and he got bugged out, he might have joined another organization, another one, and he might have shot up some people. Guess, guess what Vocab going to do? He's going to equate it to us. It says, uh, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, saying, great and marvelous are thy works, Lord, power almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Now, it says they sing, they sing a song, right? The song that they sing is the song of Moses. So now let's go to, let's go to, uh, all right, Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him, and 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung, as it were, a new song. The song that they're going to be singing is the song of Moses. Before thy throne and before, and the song represents this truth that we're singing. We're singing it right now. 
it, tell, it tells you in uh, uh, Matthew 11 chapter, we have piped unto you, but you have not danced. Meaning we was on the highways and the byways <clears throat> in the marketplace speaking to you, but you can't, you, you didn't dance to it. You didn't catch the tune. Bear me for a minute. Anyway, let's get back. Let's go back into this right here. And let me let you let, listen. I hope you can hear it. You can download the PDF for the results. In 2019, there are 46.8 million people who self-identify as black, making up roughly 14% of the country's population. This is very, very recent data. This is Pew Research Center, March 21. March 2021, 4%, 4% of the people surveyed said, I am a Hebrew Israelite, because they asked a question about Hebrew Israelites, which I'm going to show you the question here in a second. Now, what does that mean? That means that in the United States of America, 1,872,000 people self-identify as Hebrew Israelites. That's almost 2 million people. If you want to be conservative, you could say, let's a million and a half. That's probably way more people than you thought. Does that mean that on a Saturday morning, there's a million people out on every street corner? No. That's why we might call this Hebrew Israelism, a set of ideas you adopt. You can be an Aryan believing Jesus was a created being like Jehovah's Witnesses without attending a local Jehovah's Witness fellowship. You see what I'm saying? You can believe in some things that Mormons believe without attending your local war. You can believe Muhammad's a true prophet without being at the mosque. You're adopting some of the ideas of the religion. That's why it's Hebrew Israelism. Next slide. Let's break this down. Out of those surveyed, 62% said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not familiar with their teachings. This is actually a slide that I didn't create, except I created the little circles in the square. But all this is from their data, right? So 62% said, I don't know what that is. 9%, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 9% said I disagree with most of the ideas. 6% said I did, I oppose them. Yeah, the ones that disagree is 62nd percent, the percent, 62% and 9% that don't agree, they're going to die. They better, they better agree. I oppose those two things. What that means is about 15% that are, are aware of it. Those who know it, 15% people disagree with the essence of it, right? But let's go to the next slide. How many agree? Those who are familiar down here in the bottom two categories, remember I mentioned the 4% number, that's where you get a million eight. But look at this. I agree with most of the core ideas taught by Black and Israelites, 19%. That means 23%, almost a quarter, 23%, agree with the essence of Hebrew Israelism. That's what they're saying. So more people, once they hear about it, agree as opposed to disagree. It's important to understand a few things. Next slide. There's very little inoculation because once you're aware, you're more likely to agree than disagree. So that means they need to. So it's really, let's come back. It's really, you know, okay, right here, 90. Go back a little bit more. Wait a minute. 19%, I agree with most of the core ideas taught by 
black Hebrew Israelites. 4%. I consider myself a black Hebrew Israelite. So really, it's really 20, 23%. 4% are more into it, I'll say, than, than the rest of them. But So it's 23%. So the population, according to this information, is almost 50, uh, 50 million, almost 50 million. Half of 50 million is 25, half, half of uh, uh, 25 is 12, you know, what is it, 12.5 million. So we, we can, based upon this information, we can safely say that, we can safely say that uh, almost 13 million Jakes out there you know, identify with being an Israelite. These people right here, they agree that they're Israelites, but they're not fully into it like these people. But that, that's a big, that's a big number, man. Anyway, I'm gonna give you a couple of precepts and I'm gonna close. Let me go to Revelation 11. I'm going to jump around. I'll start the seven verse, Revelation 11, verse seven. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit, which goes back to Revelation 20, when Christopher Columbus and Renaissance pit shall make war against them. They took down Gad and the tribes, the Northern kingdom. Then they went and got the uh, Southern kingdom and uh, made, made them suffer slavery and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street, street of the great city because all the tribes are here right now. If you go back to the 1800s, you didn't have them tribes over here. Pretty much what you had in America, uh, you had uh, so-called white people, black people, Indians. Reubenites, you know, the uh, Indian tribes and some Mexicans. You didn't have all those other other tribes, what they call Colombians and Brazilians and so forth. So now you have all the tribes, you know, the makeup of the 144,000, you got all the tribes here. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. They took out the real Messiah and gave you an Edomite Messiah. And they, the people and kindreds and tongues and nations, shall, shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. We the gifts, not slavery. Because these two prophets tormented them uh, that dwell on the earth. That's the fulfillment of uh, Lamentation 2 verse 15. And after three days and a half, the spirit of, of life from the Father entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And vocab is one of them. That's why he said what he said. He said, and we can't deal with that. We can't, you know, we can't overcome them. We can't deal with them. We're not ready for them. So now that all this happened, guess what? 
then this is going to happen. The Lord is going to come back. The earthquake is going to come. The destruction is going to come. The second woe is past, and behold, the third cometh quickly, which is Armageddon. This is beautiful, man. Anyway, I was going to go on to Ezekiel. Matter of fact, let me go on to that Ezekiel. Thirty-seven, dry bones in the valley. That's us. Ezekiel saw the dry bones coming together, with sinews, uh, uh, flesh, blood, covering garments. They had no breath in them. The breath is what the, the true knowledge. It says. Uh, verse, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army, a spiritual army. So it says the same thing in Revelation 11, but it said the, the difference is that fear fell upon them. This guy, vocab, he's scared to death. He's hoping like hell he's an Israelite and not an Edomite. Anyway, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.